First of all, thanks everyone here who waited for this event. This is probably the tenth time we've done this Sandhana. It's basically like a monthly talk that the Sussex Entrepreneurship Center run and we basically our goal is just to help educate entrepreneurs and share experiences from uh, successful or fellow entrepreneurs to help inspire and also educate right, as a academic an academic institution as a whole. So uh, today we have like a full house. I think there will probably still be people coming. Uh, after the event, it's going to run until around 7.30. Then after that we have food outside. Probably pizza today if I'm wrong. But yeah, so stay on and then the networking event is after. But just to introduce today, we have Kun Hong, Kun Hong who's going to be sharing his experience mainly on how his journey on raise, like fundraising has been in the past 10 years or so. He's been in the payments industry for over a decade now, and currently he's the group CEO of 2C2P, one of the famous uh, payment gateway, I would say. Right. But I've used it quite a few times. I think yesterday I just made a transaction on live, live hair or something like that. And it went through your system. But yeah, so he'll share his experience today. So let's give a warm welcome to Kunal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great, perfect. Great evening. Uh, just by show of how many of you are from Sassin or associated with Sassin? Oh, okay, a lot of non Sassin. Okay, perfect. So uh, the topic uh, Sassin uh, team would like me to do is how to, but it's not really how to. What I'm going to explain is for the first 12 years or 13 years or so, I have been through different kinds of fundraising process. And I would like to take you through my experience and then hopefully share with you an idea or two how uh, I have evolved or my company has evolved. So this should not be like one way traffic. So if in case at any point of time if you want to raise your hand and ask me any question, I'm more than happy to answer. Let's do what we'll have to The introduction has been done. Uh, I mean, uh, I am starting in year 06, graduating in 08. Uh, I've been here. Living in Thailand for about 16 years, I've been doing payment, different kinds of payment company for the past 15 years. So I'm originally from Burma, uh, now it's called Myanmar. I left my country in '98, start settling down in '99, fall in love with a beautiful Thai lady, getting married, and I end up in. So I'll take you through this. Uh, so. First, I'll share a little bit about, just a little bit about what the company does. Or, I mean, not really what we do, it's just where we are at this point in time after 12 years. And then what motivated me to do this. And then I'll take you through my experience since 2003 all the way to today. And then I stretch out in such a way that you will know from PC book, like, Three Fs, angel investors, like incubation, and then you will tell you all about that. And I, I, I put this sort of like a little bit of storyline throughout my life. So it's not really how to, it's just how I have experienced through this 12 years. Then. Possible? Uh, just a brief profile of the company. So. Last year we brought about 2.2 billion US dollar. In China we have about 85% market share. If you're holding a Thai card, Thai credit card, and if you're buying something online, probably you will receive a one OTP message on your on your phone that probably came from our system. And we accept every single payment brands available today, uh, ranging from Diamond Club all the way to you know, Visa Master. And now in 10 different countries. Uh, we put uh, our U.S. entity simply because we don't have access to the API of the 
you know, the latest API from Apple and all not. If we are from Southeast Asia, they don't want to give us. So we say, okay, we are also a US company, but we don't have anybody there. We just have the US entity. Our focus is Southeast Asia. We try to provide payment technology in Southeast Asia enterprises. So we have raised over a little bit over 10 million US dollar through different series, series A, series B, and series C. I'll take you through that, and I'll tell you what those series are, how those are defined. So um, we headquarter in Singapore, so this way we also receive some, some form of grants from the Singapore government. So this is the journey I will take you through. This is where we are today. And today we, have, we serve over 20, more than 20 banks across Southeast Asia, from Jakarta all the way to Yangon and all the country in between. <coughs> and uh, like uh, he mentioned, we are linked with clients. We serve about 15 airlines right now. We have a few other e-commerce service providers. That's, that's, I mean, this is our specialized uh, area of providing payment technology to the airlines. So that's all about it. And this is the team right now. Let's get out in. We had about uh, 70. This year, we will cross 100. So I, usually we go out at September, so we will cross 100. And why did I do that? Well, why, why did I go into this crazy stuff? But in fact, I was a really, really lazy programmer. I write code, and I, 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 just, I just write code. The way I'm speaking now is, is I am trained to become a public speaker. Uh, not a good one. But I just I have to go through that process uh, during the training period so that I can pitch in front of the investor. In the early days, I just sit at the corner and write my code. But this day changed everything. My baby boy was born on 18 of April 2003. I wanted him to give the best and the best in the world as a father's love. Five days later, I left my job and started my first company. That's, that's how it began. So now, let's go through the VC stuff. Early years. So early years, usually we call it three Fs. Do you know what three Fs are? Okay. Friends, family, and food. So this is the first people you go for if you need money for your company, if you need money for your startups. Seriously, so, so usually what, what you will do is you will go look for money from these people. And obviously for me, uh, when I started the company, I thought that it was, I was really, really naive. I was 26 years old. I thought that starting a company will make a problem. Right? From the start, boom. I write a code, I go and sell this with millions of bar, and then life will be happy. Well, I was really wrong for about three, four years. So, what I did is I started looking at my family, which is my wife. Both my wife and I came from very, very low middle class family. Uh, so she's from Chiang Mai. She has nothing, you know. She does have, she doesn't have a big family background like our sons in Chiang So I started uh, setting up an office at Software Park in 2003, and this is a floor plan of Software Park in country because I wanted to be in that building because that building is the, the building where all the software companies are located. But I don't have enough money to rent all this place. So I rented this place, <laughs> which cost me 6,000 baht, it was a lot of money at the time. And that place is right next to a male toilet and in HU. HU is the air conditioning unit. You know, what you do is, and this unit has no windows. So usually what we do is, I have two stations and one meeting room. <laughs> and this is my server rack. So this is my meeting table, and, and my friend and I start writing code. And we don't know what time it is, but the time will be told by HU. At 8 a.m. in the morning, it will start boom. And then we know that, okay, now it's 8 a.m. in the morning. So that's how we get started. And we start writing code for uh, a bank. And actually, we choose a very, very bad industry or wrong industry to write a software for a bank 
in any country, uh, we need to have a track record. To be able to sell a software or to be able to license a software to a bank, we need to be at least three years old. And we need to be able to have a reference. And usually that credit line is like three months or six months. But we didn't know. We wrote the software. And then I communicate my passion in my family, which is my wife. I told her that this is going to make a lot of money. This is really, really, really good. So she has to believe in it. And at the same time, I explain all the risks. So it means we can go broke. So the advantage is they have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> they have no choice but to accept it. <laughs> and they will always support idea because, you know, you are the, their left one. But disadvantage, obviously, your, your idea may not be good, but they will still say, yeah, you know, go for it. And it means you are risking everything. Maybe she can, you know, go away and go for another guy with, you know, pick up Ferrari. So, so this is how, you know, uh, you can raise money for your family. So if you have parents or brother or sister, that's, that's the way to go. So, obviously, my wife started. <laughs> At first, I would say, uh, Darling, I cannot give you enough money. Can you please go and go to the pawn shop and buy food? So <laughs> that's the beginning. And then I would say, I don't have enough money to pay salary to my employee. Can you please go and pawn more of your jewelry? So all how you know my wedding gift to her, including wedding ring, always go in and out of this shop pawn <laughs> list. And we end up also refinancing our car, I mean, this is not our car, we have, we have a small car, we have it, we refinance our car for four times to pay ourselves when the team start growing. And that was our team. This including wives. So we have like five guys uh, after, the five, after five years. So we have five guys and, and finally we had a sort of like a breakthrough. So this, this is how we try to raise money from family. So if you have something going on and if you want to communicate, then you can, you can get some money from your family. Next is friends and fools. So usually after, uh, after a period of time, we, you know, we needed more, basically I needed more money than uh, what I can get from my friends. My wife. So I could start looking for friends and food. So it was a couple of rich friends from Sassin School. At the time, I'm already, I'm already studying at Sassin. So a couple of rich friends from Sassin uh, joined hand with me to start another business. So what I experienced is that with friends and food, they usually would like to be with you if you are do well, and if they don't want to be with you, you can no longer do well. That's always the case. So be remember. So when you offer to them, make sure after your handshake, make sure agreement is there. Make sure you sign agreement, regardless of how close friend you are. Because if you don't accept those, things will go really, really bad. Been through that, that's me. And we focus on well-connected friends, and sometimes if they know the industry is good, if they don't know the industry, make sure they have enough money so that you know you can you can get you know, the money for your business. And don't mess more than they can. So the advantage is you can get money quite easily, uh, quite fast. You know, it's of course lower than your wife, but it's faster. Uh, and if they will support your ideas so far, if things are in good shape, but if they if Things are getting bad, then then they will they will really really hate you. So so be careful. And what happened is they will do this if you don't have a signed document. If you're doing well, the money they give you is equity. They declare they own the company. If you're not doing well, it is considered as low, and they expect the money to be returned. And they will supervise you. Especially, they will kind of monitor you and they will tell you what to do and what not to do. So, be careful when you are dealing with friends and fools. So, we, we do have that. But, uh, I, I went through this with 
one of uh, the company I started, and and the company is doing well today. But along the way, uh, we went through all this hassle. We have to go to so many debates and discussion, and sometimes friendship was at risk. So if you're doing this, make sure you shake hands, sign the piece of paper, so you don't have to go to that like I guess um, seven years. Any questions? And then this is three S. So uh, friends, family, and food. After that, I will talk about um, angel. Angels can be. Uh, uh, do you know definition of angels? It's like a wealthy individual or wealthy group of individuals who would like to invest money uh, into a new startup company. So usually. What they do is they, they have a strong business knowledge, they have a good business connection, and sometimes, and most of the time, they are very entrepreneurial, or they are even entrepreneurial. And they specialize in specific industry. The advantage is they know the process of what is investment, so they don't, you know, they don't come and supervise you, they don't convert from loan to equity and equity loan, uh, as, you know, anytime they wish. They know, they know really, you know, they know how to invest. But at the same time, they will try to take a lot of equity from you, especially angels in Asia, especially angels in Southeast Asia. Because Asian angels really think that money is everything. So if you have no money and then if you know if you go ahead for the investment, they will try to take a lot of your equity. And if you are happy with that, fine. So I went through uh, a bunch of AJ investment with my second company called Paysabai. So I started Paysabai with a friend in 2004. Some of you may know Paysabai and it's still So in 2004 to 2008, we went through a couple of angel investment rounds using a group of kind angels. Yeah, really good people. Uh, but they, of course, they, because they, they have the one, they are the one with the money. They take on more uh, more equity, which we accepted. And at the time we are uh, under 30, we don't know what to do with it. So we took the company, and thanks to them, we took their money, drive the company very well. And in 2007, we sold the company to Detect. Today, if you go and visit the company, you will see this logo. And when we sold the company, it was uh, 200 million baht, supposed to be one of the largest position at the time. So during this period, those angels helped us to get the Bank of Thailand license because they're well connected. They can call people. They get it, you know, they get it done. And they, they helped us in the recruiting. They mentor us how to run the business. And finally, they helped with all this acquisition. It was very complex acquisition. All these angels make sure uh, the acquisition goes through, and they handle us all the way. So if we know how to take advantage of the angels, then, then there will be there will be a good return for the uh, entrepreneur as well. So this is uh, how we have dealt with it so far. Any questions? So three Fs and angels. Now I mean a real meet uh, VC and. And then what is incubation and what is pitches? In fact, before before an entrepreneur, I'm, I'm sure most of you are entrepreneur, or at least some of you are entrepreneur, and some of you are interested in an entrepreneur. Before talking to VC, I would really recommend going through incubation process by getting help from the incubator, and also probably practice pitches. It really helps. And this is what I did. Uh, this is what I did with the uh, when I was. Uh, started starting the company. So I chose Douglas because Douglas was my professor assassin and at the same time he helped me all the way in Singapore. So what I did is he runs an in incubator called Aspire and there are a lot of incubators today. I mean you can pick and choose who you want to work with but he makes sure that the, the team or the person who is running the incubator knows what they are doing. They have a good reputation and then they will train you. They will take you through a process so that 
a gig can be transformed into a little bit presentable in front of the investor. So you will be able to talk about VC language, like what is IRR, what is the ROI, and all this crazy stuff, which is only the acronyms used by these guys. But if you don't understand their terminology, sometimes you think that you are not a good enough uh, founder or CEO of the company. So if you train their, their ways, if you know what their language, it helps you. So, and also, VC financial model is slightly different from a typical balance sheet and income statement what we, you and I learned from the finance, uh, uh, the finance class. So, they do have a different kinds of projection model and different kinds of process. So, if, we, if you can understand what it does and how to present it, it would be, it would be improved. So, it takes about three to six months to, to get all of that. And then, the rest is more like Pitching. So usually a good incubator will give you a chance to pitch. In 2009 and 2010, my job is pitching. And I pitch and pitch and pitch. That's all, I, uh, that's all I've been doing. So Douglas will put me in front of his class to pitch. Douglas will put me in front of his advisor to pitch. So every pitch makes me improve a little bit better and better and better. It's just a repetition process. So so once you keep repeating it, then, then uh, at, at one stage, you, you, will be, you will be good at it. So that's what I've been doing with him. And receiving positive criticism, they will tell you this part is wrong. And then they will, sometimes they will put me in front of judges who throw me out of my in comfort zone. They will ask me questions that I will not be able to answer. So they will grill me until you know, I'm completely uh, depressed. So, but, <laughs> But you have to go through that because some VCs are really, really mean. Really mean. Trust me, really mean. Especially Chinese VC. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, they will give you a piece of paper, they call the term sheet, that has like eight or nine pages of description of how they will invest the money and how, how much they will own and, and all this stuff. And most of the time it's one sided. You need to be able to interpret it together with your you know with your mentor or together with your lawyer to be able to respond back to them, back and forth, and negotiate those term sheets. So that's, that's how it goes. Then, after you got trained, after your presentation is repeated over and over and over again, then you go around and pitch. So thanks to Singapore government, thanks to Douglas, uh, they give me an opportunity to go to Silicon Valley to pitch, Stanford to pitch, Beijing to pitch. So the, the, the job at the time is usually for the first six months, I'm pitching to very weird VC. And I'm pitching to the VC which we will not consider taking money from. But he will intentionally send me to them to pitch because actually he is not expecting to raise money from them. He is simply putting me to, to practice. So I'm just doing the trial run, just practicing. And after a while, when he thinks that I'm ready, only then he will, he will send me to someone really we need to receive investment. So that's, that's how it goes. So, so once you pitch a while, you will know that this type of investor is this kind, this investor is this kind, and this investor is this kind. So you can categorize them in a different region pool, and you will know who will be, you know, who will be your kind of investor. They are all really, really different. Uh, and some of them are mean, some of them are mean. I, I have a few examples. So this is, this, is, uh, this is how I went through. And after years of practice, I even represented Singapore in Beijing and won some award from the pitching event, which I'm, I'm a programmer completely. And then like three, four years later, I could uh, compete against some of them. So it's, it can be trained even you know, a, a bad guy like me can become a so there are five types of VC. So usually they call it seed capital. So there will be a VC only going to give you a little bit more money, like 50,000, 100,000, and to get you started. If you want to talk to seed capital, if you want to get seed capital, you need to have an idea. You need to be able to explain your idea, and you need to tell them how this idea will evolve and how this idea is a great idea. 
If you have an idea, go and see C PC. Then use that money to develop a prototype or a product. Probably once you have prototype a product, you may have no product or no customer. But at that time, you can show your prototype and get started capital. Sometimes they call it Series A. Or sometimes they just call it CWD as well. So I mean, seek fund. It, it really depends. So the way it does, some of the country, like Singapore government, will give you grant. So they will, they will give you like 50,000 grant money. It's no obligation as a founder to realize the idea. Let's say you have an idea, and you want to make sure you develop that into a product. So what they give you is they give you some money so that you can put it into a prototype or a product. So for some country, they give grant. So once you have a prototype or product, then you can go and look for seed capital or startup. It's usually range from about uh, 100,000 to 500,000 or 1 million. It really depends. In, in the US, some of the startup capital or seed capital can become 50 million. <laughs> so so it's, that's their part of the world. And for Southeast Asia, our norm is that you will get about 100, 200 to 500,000 dollars as an investment if they invest a like prototype. And then once you have a prototype, once you have the capital, you can have a build, you can build a team, you probably have a few customers, yet you're trying to break even. Once you are at this this stage, you will probably go and look for early stage capital. Early stage capital, sometimes they call it series B, sometimes they call it series A, it really depends uh, how how they define it and which uh, stage you are at. And usually, once you have this, and you will become an established company, you may have a new product line, and you may enter into a new market. So once you do that, you will be raising expansion capital. So this is the stage a mining company is at. And then, next stage right now, I mean, I have a explanation to show. Uh, next stage probably is then we are talking about IPO. Before IPO, sometimes we need to raise money. Sometimes we are talking about acquisition, whether we acquire somebody to make us grow faster, or we get acquired by some other, some other guys. So this is more like late stage capital. This is how it flows. So usually in Southeast Asia, this area and this area is extremely active. The problem right now we are facing in Southeast Asia, PC ecosystem, is this two area is people not so many no, not so many VC to invest because this area and this area is about five to ten million uh, investment. So so there are a lot of startups or seed something. What they do is they give fifty thousand dollar or one thousand dollar. But once you have a prototype of product, you need some more money to to go to market. And this is the this is a stage where where we don't have match capital coming into this this stage. I have a question about sure. um, seed grants. Uh, what are the conditions typically like the Singapore government they expect you to set a uh, business to the Singapore government? Uh, yes, the, the condition to get a grant is uh, you will have to establish a Singapore company and then you will have to develop a product or prototype in Singapore and and but once you have this you can sell it anywhere. But for them, they prefer you to sell out of Singapore because they uh, they want to export. It is a very export-driven economy. So if you have a good idea, you can submit a proposal, and then you will go through the stages. And then if they got approved, you will have the grant. Their requirement is once your company became profitable, profitable, not revenue, really profitable, you have to return. Uh, okay. The grant we received fifty thousand dollars grant. We are obligated to return fifty thousand dollars if our company is profitable over one million dollars. But if you have more than one million dollar profit, you should return, right? So, so that's the condition. And no interest. You just return fifty thousand. It's not the interest in only owning your company. The interest is to develop you so that they can take you to the next level and grow to grow your company and hope that one day you will pay our tax. <laughs> Long term. Do you need to be a resident of Singapore to apply for this? Negative, no. You can be anywhere in the world as long as you have a Singapore company. Uh, you have to go and live there. You have to go and operate there. You have to go and operate there. Right. Not live there. Operate there. Oh, okay. Right. 
Taylor? Is there any significance here, Taylor? As far as I know of, no. I may be wrong. They are, but they are very active private investors doing, not grant, but doing something more like uh, seed funding. But they are a little bit uh, angel style, angel style negotiation. I have heard a few angel style negotiation by these guys in Thailand. 